Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another webinar on uh, of Spring series. Um, today we'll be talking about the, some of the new features in Prisma Access 3.0. Prisma Access 3.0 will be releasing two plugins, uh, two versions. We are releasing 3.0 Preferred and 3.0 Innovation. Like we have earlier in our 2.0 release, but it will be only single plugin. Prisma Access 3.0 will use a single plugin for both 3.0 Preferred or 3.0 Innovation. The version that plugin activates is dependent on the data plane version of the Prisma Access you are using. So the cloud service plugin 3 auto preferred will run on the Panavis version 10.0 data plane, which is the same as the data plane running for the 2.2 preferred release. And cloud service plugin 3.0 innovation will run on that uh, Panavis release 10.0 data plane, which unlock the latest feature available in the 10.1 data plane in addition to the new features which will be in the part of the prisma access so the prisma access 2.2 preferred is a prerequisite for the prisma access 3.0 preferred so if your deployment is on an earlier version of the prisma access like 2.1 or 2.0 first you need to upgrade to 2.2 before you upgrade to 3.0 Prisma Access will make 3.0 plugin available to you after deployment has been upgraded to the 2.0 preferred. Uh, make sure that you have signed up for all the email alerts in the Prisma Access app. So you will receive the email notifications via Prisma Access Insights when the 3.0 plugin will be available to you for upgrade. And one thing important, upgrade from 2.0 or 2.1 to 3.0 directly is not supported. First, you should upgrade to 2.2. And if you want to upgrade to 3.0 innovation, you need to reach out to your Palo Alto Networks account representative and the submit request. And this request will be reviewed internally and um, they will provide you the guidelines. <clears throat> Here's the minimum uh, requirements for 3.0 preferred and innovation. For 3.0 preferred, your panorama should be running on 9.1.7 on later versions or 10.0.5 or later versions or 10.1.2. And for the 3.0, it should be on uh, the minimum version requirement is 10.1 or to the later versions. Uh, global protect uh, version will be 5.1.6 or 5.2.3 or any version which is not um, end of life. This, this will be supported on that. Prisma Access 3.0 is the only solution that protects all apps with the best in class security while driving an exceptional user experience. The new uh, next gen Caspi functionality automatically keeps uh, the piece with the SaaS explosions with the proactive visibility, real time data protection, and the best in class security. 3.0 will provide you the simplicity and scale with the addition of the new compute regions, wildfire regions, and introducing you the RBI integration workflows. Prisma Access 3.0 gives you the visibility and serviceability by providing unified management console for the DLP and SaaS security. It will introduce um, some of the new features on the Prisma Access Insights enhancement also with signal connectivity, user ID visibility. And we will go into the each of this feature into the details in the next slides. Let's have a look at the visibility and the serviceability. This feature improved overall usability of the integration for the customers who are using the Prisma Access and as Devan said, the SASE customers. So the SASE customers depend on the CloudBlade model to bring up the connectivity between the Prisma SD-WAN 
and Prisma Access. So automation built into that integration still requires multiple steps and usability of the entire workflow is not as uh, good. So we, we are improving the overall usability with the integration here and the, the cloud container support for panoramic customers. This will include the seamless migration from an on-prem Docker container. Um, AWS for remote networks support for the, uh, both panorama managed and the cloud managed. And customer now can migrate seamlessly from uh, non-aggregate bandwidth licenses to the aggregate bandwidth licenses. Some of those enhancements in Prisma Access Insights for reducing that serial connectivity. Uh, that dashboard will provide you um, insights into the serial connectivity feature. This will equip users with the visibility into the real-time status of serial connection to the Prisma Access. Uh, you can understand the trend of disconnections and duration of each instance disconnection. Another enhancement in the Prisma Access Insights is the feature uh, for the user ID and user group. This enables you to extract the required user ID to IP and user group mapping without opening the packet. Um, you can then troubleshoot if the information of service uh, security processing node is out of config uh, sync or if it's the required information is present to allow intended security policy enforcement. We will be having another detailed webinar where we'll be discussing Prisma Access Insights specifically and go through all of these future enhancements which we have introduced for 3.0 and uh, and we'll go through each use cases into the detail. So please register for that webinar. Um, uh, calendar information is available on our live community. Prisma Access Cloud Management, some of the enhancements, new features in the Prisma Access Clouds. So we are introducing that <clears throat> uh, public API support, which includes the shared API deep infrastructure, um, RESTful API, JSON API format, um, filtering, sorting, uh, and version of APIs. We had um, yesterday a webinar of which, uh, which were covered all about the APIs. API support for the cloud managed. Uh, if you have not attended uh, or you're and you're running the cloud managed uh, Prism Access deployment, I will highly encourage you to please uh, go through the recording. Which recording is uploaded already on a YouTube live community channel and as well as our live community Prism Access page. Um, so. <clears throat> Uh, so simplified workflows to enable the traffic isolation through the RBI. And we are also introducing some of the best uh, practice enhancement checks for the Express proxy, which helps the adoption of the best practices and uh, improvement for the security posture. Uh, and policy optimization, which is the ability to remove rules from optimization, allows customers to choose, um, eliminate certain rules from optimization. So the best of the paid security features of 3.2 uh, to discuss these uh, in detail, I will hand over to our senior product manager, Tonur, who will walk us through some, uh, and, and explain about the uh, detail of the best of paid security features and some of the exciting enhancements we are introducing in 3.2. So over to you, Tonur. Thank you. Thank you, Kuram. Thanks everybody for attending. Uh, right, security is in the Palo Alto DNA, so that uh, gives me a great chance to, and always happy to talk about this part whenever uh, we address uh, our new enhancements. So um, thinking about the, the list that uh, Kuram shared at the beginning of the presentations, right, with all the features uh, that came in, in 3.0, I would have to pick one, right, the, the very, very highlight of uh, every, many things are, are awesome and important, but if I would have to pick one uh, item out of those, right, uh, our investment in next gen CASB, it's probably the one that I, I would always uh, talk about uh, more in detail. So why is that? Right, It's um, uh, because of the times we are all going through, right? Uh, and even before all the COVID stuff happened, right? 
uh, the, the usage of SaaS applications uh, were experiencing a, a true explosion, right? We have some numbers here in the slide, but I won't uh, uh, double click on those. But even looking at all our uh, daily life, right? We all use all kinds of applications. And with those applications, uh, new security risks are, are coming, right? So um, when, when we talk about true best of breed security, um, the data and the SaaS application security, it's a significant uh, part of it, right? You cannot have a, a, a true strong security posture without considering these, these uh, data and SaaS application security aspects, right? So in this release, we double click on that and we invested and there are uh, a lot of, of innovations that I'm gonna uh, be covering in the next few slides, right? So, but obviously here, the, the, the need for, for uh, such uh, functionalities are, are uh, critical, right? So if we move to, to the next slide, uh, I, I just wanna kind of take out the, the marketing label, right? Many vendors are calling many things next gen, uh, right? And it, right, people, very often customers are confused or uh, it's not so clear what's what's really the new stuff. Uh, is it enough value behind that label that, that can uh, allow or enable a, a vendor to, to call it next gen? And I strongly believe we do have enough value and even more, right? There were significant innovations in, in that area. And here are just some, some highlights that I want to mention. But before going into the what's, what's changed, I want to spend a few seconds on uh, what's exactly behind the next gen CASB uh, uh, label, right? So in Palo Alto terms, uh, there are four components, right? And you have them in the yellow boxes at the bottom of the screen, uh, right? It's uh, SAS inline and DLP inline. Obviously, by, by the name, uh, those are tackling the data security and the SAS security from an inline perspective. That's that's coming very natural for Prisma Access, who is the, who is sitting in the best position, right, between the users and the the, the, the applications, and obviously we can uh, enforce these policies, securing sensitive data from being exfiltrated, um, showing the customers what's behind the, the shadow IT, right? I I, I like a saying that. Um, if you if your company has employees automatically you have shadow it right so be sure that your users will find smart ways to uh, to solve their daily uh, issues and to enhance their productivity by installing on their own some apps or using some some apps without the the it department uh, vetting those applications and this is one thing that obviously next gen casb it's, it's helping us to, to solve so i i talked about the inline uh, portion, but also you cannot call a true CASB uh, solution if you don't consider the API uh, point of view. Think about uh, files that you already uploaded to, to your SaaS applications, right? In Office 365, in Box, whatever it's your, your SaaS applications, maybe month ago or years ago uh, before you started uh, using Prisma Access, right? So those files at rest can still um, uh, have have potential risks, right? Either the, the files contain malware or they're being shared with the wrong people, publicly shared, etc. So uh, we truly believe that the, uh, um, a real next-gen CASB solution should, should uh, look at, at both these angles, right? Inline and API. And these are the four components in the Palo Alto world that are, are helping our customers with, with these use cases. Okay, so that's the that's the, the base, right? So what's, what's new on, on this? What, what are we coming with that we are calling next gen? Uh, first uh, first uh, green box there talks about support for uh, far more collaboration apps, right? We consider that these days, these collaborations are key, right? Everybody's spending most of the day on Zoom or Confluence, on Jira, on Salesforce, etc. So being able to, to uh, secure those applications, and I'll, I'll give some examples, right? Maybe one box and my, my uh, description is not doing you justice to, to the value that's behind it, right? But we, we, we really invested in, in securing those types of applications. Um, in data security, um, 
accuracy is also key, right? So that's another area where we invested and put a lot of uh, ML engines behind the scenes, NLP, natural language processing to, to detect the context in which certain things are being shared. Uh, why is that important, right? If your accuracy is low and um, uh, your sec data security admins start getting a ton of false positives, uh, sooner or later they will just disable those features right and then that's that's a high risk a potential high risk for for the customer so for that reason accuracy is key for for data security and casb in general so that's where another area where we invested a lot of uh, and we have a lot of in, in enhancements uh, third third bullet right third uh, green bucket there uh, it, it's great to have awesome features uh, strong security functionalities etc but if those are hard to be managed and uh, customers have a hard time consuming those, uh, right? That that's not uh, what we want. So for that reason, we also uh, right and and uh, Kuram already touched based on that. Uh, talking about our cloud management, we want to simplify and um, uh, have every uh, setting in under the Casby world uh, being available under the same roof in cloud management. Right for now, it's it's uh, the SaaS security line component and the DLP components are already there, and yeah, soon in the future, uh, SaaS the SaaS API component will be there as well. So that's that's uh, again another strong initiative we have to, to simplify things. And last box, um, that that's a very interesting uh, flow that we are proposing. Talking to to many of our customers, we've seen that in 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 many enterprises, right, there are typically two personas uh, managing these different security aspects, right. We see very often that there is a data or CASB admin, a data security admin, um, who who decides or uh, right what SaaS applications are being. In, uh, sanctioned what's allowed what's tolerated what's what's uh, unsanctioned right to be blocked and there's a different persona who really has the power to enforce these uh, policies in prisma access so for these scenarios we created a, uh, an interesting flow where the, the cast the admin can define these what we call policy recommendations saying hey these apps based on what i'm seeing based on what your SaaS inline is showing me I see that there are n numbers of high-risk applications being used, heavily used by these amount of users, et cetera. So based on what we show, uh, the CASB admin can um, propose these policies and then those policies, uh, those recommendations are coming and are being vetted by the Prisma Access admin and uh, enforced or changed or updated or, or not even considered, right? All the options are on the table. It's not a mandatory, uh, flow right the, the prisma access admin can create uh, SaaS security policies directly right without waiting for any recommendations but that's an interesting flow that that uh, uh, it's well received by many of our customers so with with that if we can move to the next slide right i'm just trying to express in some some uh, real examples what i meant by uh, securing collaboration apps right everybody's using slack right so what if you share intentionally or by mistake some, something sensitive, right? We've seen the top uh, line example, an IP and a password. Uh, we have the ability, and this is coming through, through the API components, right? SaaS API and DLP API to automatically detect these sensitive information exfiltration. And not. Uh, and also an interesting thing we do, right? We, we are notifying the user. So... If it's indeed a well-intended user, uh, we automatically train them and they are, next time they're more aware that, hey, this is a sensitive information, I, I shouldn't share it, right, on a SaaS application. So we automatically notify near real time the end user and give the options to, to block these messages uh, with, with sensitive information, right? That's one example out of many where, where we secure uh, uh, such collaboration apps, right? And uh, this is an example with Slack, but obviously, right, we, we support things like uh, Teams or, or Zoom uh, recently, and, and many others. In the last, in the in the next row, right, uh, in the middle here, uh, information can be in in the chat uh, text, right? But very often these days, right, you 
prefer to take a screenshot of something and just share it. And there could be very well sensitive information in, in those pictures. Right, we see here a very messy picture of, of a social security card. Right, even if it's messy, we are able to detect and apply the same DLP profiles against these uh, pictures, right, using uh, OCR optical character uh, recognition. And again, do the same thing, notifying the user, hey, make sure next time this is not something that you should do, etc. And uh, this is very powerful if we click one more time, the, the, enabling the users, right? Empower end user remediation. It's also uh, a very well received flow by our customers. If we click to the next slide, um, right? I have a, a, a real example. It's, it's kind of covering the same thing that we had in, in, in the previous slide, but gives you a, a live feeling of how the end user experience will be. This is con contextual detection. Here is where NLP, natural language processing, plays a key role, right? So uh, Mega, uh, and all kudos to, to Mega uh, who, who did this demo, right? I'm, I'm using it here in this session. Um, so there is one person uh, sharing a password, right? And we are able to, to detect that, hey, this is very likely a sensitive information. You shouldn't do that. So. Uh, the ability to detect from the context that this is something that looks sensitive versus uh, a regular conversation that's that's uh, something that uh, right it's it's very powerful in the data security field uh, we had the the example in the in the slide with with a social security card here you you saw the same use case but using a a note right with some handwriting Again, a lot of ML um, AI involved in the background there to, to be able to detect that ugly handwriting. Hope I'm not hurting any feelings, but that's that's also uh, a strong capability we have. And uh, as I was saying, right, Slack was just an ex example, but you can very well uh, exfiltrate sensitive, critical sensitive data in other collaboration apps. We have Jira here, for example. Right. Think about a use case where you are in an escalation. Everybody wants to, to solve it quickly. So there is a, maybe a developer here who is trying, and, and you see there are some private keys, AWS or GCP private keys being shared there. So everybody is trying to solve it as quickly as possible. You upload in Jira right, some data to be used by others, but that can be critical information that can very well harm the, the end customer, Right, private keys, etc. Are, are key to, to the security. So again, we have the same uh, detection mechanism available there. We, we through the API components, we can talk to, to Jira and figure out if uh, whatever post it's being done there, um, if contains sensitive information. And if it does, we automatically notify you. Let's say the example with Slack, we can have a Slack channel and, and you get uh, notified uh, through the same Slack channel that you uploaded something sensitive in Jira. Yes, we just started from, from the beginning. So we can move to the next slide if possible. So that kind of gives you the sense of what we were talking about, uh, supporting collaboration apps and uh, high accuracy in, in detecting sensitive information, right? Uh, two key aspects in, in, the, uh, in many CASB related use cases. Now, we, we also want to, make things um, easily to, to be consumed by our customers. So uh, here is uh, maybe the, 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 the print screens are not awesome, right? The, the fonts are quite small, but the point that we are trying to make here, it's uh, if you're managed by cloud management in Prisma Access, you'll have also uh, these CASB components, SaaS security in line and DLP under the same roof. That's already there. So you, 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 if you have these licenses, right, uh, DLP and SaaS security, you should see these screens and you wouldn't have to go to a different uh, portal to, to manage uh, these use cases, right? So this is also key. And if we click one more time, um, I guess we'll, we'll, here is where uh, there, there are some examples of uh, that policy recommendation flow, right, where the CASB admin on the left uh, can create a policy recommendation again based on what we are showing uh, to the to the admin in terms of what's the the shadow IT stand right what applications are being used 
uh, what what are high risk uh, we have a lot of uh, criteria and uh, uh, manageable weights that that you can uh, tweak the risk specifically for for your maybe vertical right um, to 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 get a more accurate risk uh, assessment of these apps and then based on what you see you can recommend these policies that later on can be uh, will automatically pop up in the Prisma Access uh, admin persona, and this person can can vet and um, automatically import those recommendations. Right, so pretty powerful flow uh, for for uh, re many of our customers out there. Cool. So that's kind of uh, concludes the Casby NG Casby part of it. Right. So again, I only scratched the, the surface. If if you're interested, please contact your accountant. More than happy to to double click and. Uh, Talk about more concrete use cases in, uh, on the ng casby uh, front uh, but uh, as you saw in in Quorum's slide at the beginning right that's ng casby it's one significant portion of prisma access p.0 but definitely not the only one so uh, in, in this one we are we continue to invest in uh, our proxy onboarding method uh, as you probably know right uh, i guess a couple of releases back we came up uh, with this alternate onboarding method, right? Um, you can be in a branch and you can onboard the Prisma access to an IPsec tunnel, or you can be a so-called mobile user, a remote worker in a coffee shop um, onboarded to Prisma access to our agent, Global Protect. Or in this case, you, you can uh, be again anywhere you want and uh, onboard to Prisma access to, to a pack file, right? Uh, to, to our uh, SWG secure web gateway. So we we, we released this several uh, releases back, but we are continuously adding uh, interesting things to, to to this onboarding method. In this one, what I want to highlight is uh, many of our customers might currently use some on-prem legacy on-prem proxies, right? And we've seen that um, sometimes they have. Uh, it's a it's it's quite hard in some use cases to to jump from an on-prem proxy architecture, right? Where maybe the the devices in your branches uh, would have a no default route architecture. They would need the proxy to to resolve DNS requests, etc. So some customers might have a hard time to migrate to jump uh, in one shot to our uh, let, let's say a recommended remote network architecture that you see on the right hand side. So to, to make this transition smoother and easier for these customers, we, we offer an alternate and intermediary step available, right? Where you, you use a mix of remote networks and an explicit proxy um, that gives you the option to have minimum changes in your network and still switch from your uh, legacy proxy to, to Prisma Access, just, just pointing to the new Prisma Access proxy, but your security it's still being done mainly by, by the remote network uh, node. And that's a very uh, easy to use intermediary step. And whenever you are ready to, to change the architecture uh, to, to what we recommend eventually, right? Uh, the, the true remote network uh, architecture, you can do it at your own pace whenever you are ready, right? Maybe one question, why are we recommended that option on the right it's because obviously that secures all ports or protocols uh, in, in the explicit in the proxy world right uh, typically you, you secure whatever it's proxyable so you might miss portions of, of the traffic so uh, very interesting enhancements in this area if we move to the next slide uh, this, these are also some 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 uh, other items on the in the proxy world, right? We added, we double clicked on on some of the security aspects, right? We enhance several things uh, related to the DNS security, and I might I would pick and and some others uh, features uh, security features, but I would also double click on on the uh, second bullet in there, right? In the past, if you in cloud management, now you have the option to edit your pack files in the portal itself. In the past, you would have to, if you'd like to change something in the pack files that your users are, uh, are picking up, you'd have to download, edit the, the pack file and re-uploading. Now you can do all these changes on the fly in the portal directly. So uh, just 
uh, on the simplification, uh, I guess this comes into the simplification uh, bucket. Okay, so if we move to the next slide, this is uh, the, the, I talked about the explicit proxy. If we move to the next one, uh, FedRAMP moderate, right? We, we, we got this certification for Prisma access. Uh, again, there are some components, right? That, that, that are not covered. We have some examples listed there, uh, Prisma Insights or ADEM, but those are also in plan to be uh, certified as well. So this, this is key, right? Uh, for public sector and federal customers, these are, are this, this certification is key. And it also gives, um, right? It's a stamp that if, if the federal customers are trusting us, obviously, right? Uh, other enterprises uh, would have more confidence as well. Uh, if we move to the next slide. Okay. Um, we talked about so far about uh, right uh, mainly security enhancements in Prisma 3.0. Now under simplicity and scale, right? That that's key um, for our solution. We we want to offer the best e user experience to to our customers, right? And uh, for that reason, we continuously add new compute locations, right? In this release, we onboarded we we, uh, we adopted three more. Right in Australia, Canada, and India, it doesn't mean that we did not already had presence there, but there are ex these are extra computes that we are adding, right? And uh, the last row door there talks about a new um, wildfire location in India. Uh, again, we are continuously on onboarding new locations to to make it to make our service even more spread. So that can help with with user experience and also data residency concerns. Okay, if we move to the next slide. Um, yes, there might be some delay. Uh, yes, uh, we also uh, continue to invest in the cloud identity engine uh, feature, right? As you probably know, right? This is not uh, Prisma Access specific, but Prisma Access is also beneficiary of uh, Palo Alto cloud identity engine. Uh, why is this key, right? Um, obviously, if you have, if you're using the, the the Palo Alto platform, and you might have next-gen firewalls, Prisma Access, VMCs, etc., right? If you're using uh, these IDPs, that uh, some examples are listed there, right? Okta, Azure AD, etc. Uh, if you take the CIE out of the picture, you'd have to integrate all these different Palo Alto components to to these IDPs. So, but Cloud Identity Engine is doing uh, the, the two major things is by sitting in the middle there it simplifies the, the the configuration the management right you only need to integrate with these idps once and then all these palo alto components are just uh, feeding their uh, right user id knowledge out of of the cloud identity engine and besides sim uh, the the simplification of the management uh, the other uh, big big benefit that i see is that you can be sure now that all the Palo Alto components are in sync and have the same view of, of the user ID mappings uh, right uh, around. Uh, if you're using the platform, you'll be sure that your user-based policies in different components will be uh, clicking in sync and as expected, uh, regardless of, of the use case or position. Right? So this is, this is key and that kind of builds on, on the platform advantage that we have against other uh, vendors in the market. So uh, very important. If we move to the next slide. Um, okay. Uh, that's also an interesting uh, feature that we added, right? Um, if you are uh, familiar with, with our uh, Prisma Access remote networks, and uh, you would probably know that we, we offer this aggregate bandwidth model where think about you have multiple branches in the same uh, region, right? Those would be um, onboarded to, to uh, the same Prisma Access compute location, right? Doesn't mean it's only one node, could be multiple nodes behind, but, but still it, it's one um, Prisma Access location. 
So uh, you can allocate a certain bandwidth to all your branches in that region. So uh, if, if one branch needs some, some more bandwidth at some time, they can load balance uh, between them. Uh, what we are doing here on top of that, we are ensuring that we can enforce QS right, for, for this model, making sure there's no one branch that uh, takes over resources from uh, more than expected from, from other uh, branches, right? And we keep a control over what's happening there, right? And it's not just a kind of um, uh, managing the, the different branches, but we can be even more specific and prioritize certain class of traffic over, over other, right? So very interesting use case. Um, if we can move to the next slide, I guess we have uh, three more items that I want to talk about. Um, remote browser isolation, right? Um, as you probably know, we already support uh, three vendors for, for these browser isolation use cases, Ericom, Menlo Security, and Authenticate. We are partnering with them uh, very successfully. Now in Prisma Access 3.0, we validated a similar integration with Proofpoint for this uh, RBI use case. Uh, in short, right? I'm trying to already answer a common question I get. Uh, many people are asking, hey, if Prisma Access is so awesome from a security uh, standpoint, why would you need this, this browser isolation, right? This air gap in between the users and the apps. And one common use case we are seeing, and that's one of the reasons we, we invested in integrating with these uh, uh, vendors, right? Think about um, uh, you might have a research team or you might have some some users that would really have to access some high risk uh, URL categories. That's again just one example. There are multiple, but I'm just highlighting an example so it makes more sense. Uh, if we talk about high risk URLs, our best practices would say, hey, just block those. If you already know those are high risk, why would you allow your users to to go there? But there are use cases where these kind of best practices are in real life cannot be implemented by our customers. So instead of a, a block or a blank allow, we have this third option now throwing this traffic through an RBI partner, right? which uh, besides the, the traffic inspection that it's still happening through Prisma Access, right? So even if a certain uh, traffic, it's going to isolation, it's still going through Prisma Access as well, and we can apply the same level of traffic inspection to that traffic. But on top, you have this RBI functionality, which again puts in uh, uh, very simplistically an air gap between the user and the, the destination. So providing uh, some, some extra security and confidence uh, for those use cases. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, Uh, one, uh, this is about our public IPs allocation flow, right? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't double click on, on this particular new functionality that we have. Uh, I would rather uh, highlight that, uh, right? As you probably know, when you're using Prisma Access as a customer, you get dedicated public IPs uh, to you, uh, which are not being shared with any other Prisma Access customer, right? This is a strong differentiator compared to other vendors in the space. Um, so what's happening, right? Your, your user from a coffee shop goes to, to Salesforce. Um, when, it, when he or she goes to Prisma Access, it's gonna get a public IP assigned and that public IP I'm, I'm talking about, right? That's gonna be uh, an IP assigned by Prisma Access. And it, but uh, the good thing, the awesome thing is that it's dedicated to you as a customer why is that important? Because it's it's uh, it's not being shared. Uh, you can be sure, right? Uh, when, for instance, you allow list those IPs to to your SaaS applications, uh, these IPs being dedicated to you, you are just allowing your users, right, to these uh, SaaS applications that that you're managing. If it would have been shared, then automatically you would have been allowed listing other uh, Prisma Access customers, right? Which is something that we all, uh, from the beginning, we designed Prisma Access uh, such a way that this is not uh, something that we want to happen, right? So, uh, and coming back to, to what this new functionality is doing, it's, um, it's making sure uh, the customers are fully aware 
um, uh, about the public IP, IP, the public IPs that are being assigned to, to them. And uh, they also have some control, right, in uh, uh, making sure there is no such case where uh, we allocate a new public IP, which uh, and the customer is not aware of and uh, did not take the, the necessary actions, like allow listing this new IP to, to the SaaS application, et cetera. So this workflow, uh, it's kind of another safety net that we are offering to our customers to make sure uh, these public IPs are managed properly. Okay, uh, last thing I wanna highlight, right? This is, um, uh, this is a functionality which is what's there for our next gen firewall customers, but for Prisma Access uh, came, came now. So obviously if, if you're a Prisma Access customer, very likely you are a Wildfire customer, right? It's Wildfire, it's part of all our Prisma Access bundles and Wildfire has its own portal. Um, there are certain use cases some particular customers wanted access to, to this world for portal uh, and and uh, there's an api interface that this world wildfire portal has and why what's a use case where this is uh, useful right uh, you obviously you in prisma access get logs from wildfire you see the verdicts is this uh, file new file malicious yes no etc but in the wildfire portal, you get some more detailed reports uh, with, with exactly what's, what happened when that file was detonated, right? How the static analysis went, how the dynamic which OS is, has been tried on, et cetera. So those reports which are sitting in the wildfire portal can be fetched now through an API key that's automatically generated for Prisma Access customers. And that's being used by some of our customers to integrate with some third-party tools where they fetch these reports and uh, take, take some actions based on, on that information that's being there. So I guess these were the, the highlights I want to mention. Um, a lot of good content, awesome content in Prisma Access Trio. Um, I encourage you to, to reach out to, to, to the account team. This has been just an overview, right? Definitely uh, the details are, are a lot more. So if any of these items are something that you would like to double click, please contact your, your accounting. And uh, yes, now we're at the, the end of the presentation.